Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is December 15, 2016. There's a reason why I turn to the book of Ecclesiastes for counsel. Like King Solomon, he came to a point in his life where he started asking the big questions. All right, he was living in sin and he started asking the big questions. Well, he got the big answer. Well, the, the big answer to what he was doing vexed him so much that he changed his life. And he, this is really the result of the book of Ecclesiastes. Being a Bible code researcher for four years plus, I started asking myself some really big questions just like King Solomon did. Like, why the ephod? Why the ephod stones? Why hide all this stuff in the, in the Bible? And why, why the Bible codes? One of the big questions that I'm asking myself right now is, what if the Nazis actually got a hold of the Bible codes? I mean, think about it. How many Jews does it take for the Nazis to murder for one of them to spill the beans on the Bible codes? And this has been going on for thousands of years, ladies and gentlemen. So that's a very valid question. What if the Nazis actually deciphered the Bible codes before they were revealed through the forefathers of the Bible codes. Let me show you something. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verses 10, 11, and 12, folded over on itself at a page width of 31. Now, I think I'm starting to understand what Habakkuk was really talking about is because Back then, they didn't have computers the same way we, that we do. It would have taken a long time to scribe some of those codes that I do in a very high ELS. As a matter of fact, that wasn't possible back then. And there had to have been a way to, in order to display the matrix so that the Bible codes could be seen, what was supposed to be the message being relayed here. So I believe now that the smaller ELSs like you see in front of you were meant for at times when they had no computer where the things had to be done by hand and they could see into the scripture, the codes this way. And the higher ELSs, the ones that I'm working on, like 100,000, 200,000, these are really high ELS. I believe those weren't meant to be seen until our time when we actually had computers. Here you have the date ADAR ADAR 26 attached to and they are coming to an end and the year 5776 this is all within three verses that was another big question that I had asked a colleague I said what if you find a date that's along the scripture I mean it's not crossing the scripture it's not going all different directions it's encoded in the scripture how can that be divination if it's encoded in the scripture it's not divination that's revelation this is one of the other big questions that i asked about this what if the nazis seen the year in verse 8 12 and they seen that and they realized that they were 70 years too early could that be the reason why they packed it in two years early before the Allied forces won, won the war? That's a serious question to consider, ladies and gentlemen. Very serious. They murdered 6 million Jews, not to mention the 5 million Christians they murdered as well. All it would take is one to spill the beans. They would have kept the guy alive, probably tortured him, and then killed him. And it waxed great and ever to the hosts of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. The date Adar... 26 is running along there and into verse 11. This is the dragon coming and subduing three of these four hosts, or I should say three of the four nations that's mentioned in Daniel chapter 7 verses 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's also Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. But in Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, they're already subdued. The three out of the four kings Mentioned in Daniel 7, 6. Adar 2, 6, 57, 76, both sharing letters with the word, they are coming to end. This here says Suf. This is the Pope. This is the codes of, you have the holy man and the transgression of the desolation. You have vision here, vision there. But you have come to end, the codes of the Pope. 
You have that sitting on Vision here, and you also have in the EFOD. And over here you have the 2300 days, and you have Daniel and his vision. When you line this up at an ELS of 31, the word codes of appears here. Let me show you what this looks like in just one code. See this? All on one line in between verse 10 and verse 13. So this is, this is what Habakkuk was talking about, having a string of coding like that, but viewing it in a very small window, a uh, very small page width. Let's take another look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. And I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahuwah answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Ye also, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathered unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. You have the word Enoch, and the word code, encoded along verse 2 and 3. So it's talking about Bible codes, ladies and gentlemen. It's even validating itself by putting the word Enoch code along there. But who's the man in verse 5? Well, if we shift this over. The Pope. And you remember what it says in Revelation chapter 18, verse 3? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornications with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. That's definitely an end time verse. Back to the Nazi thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. Therefore I hated life because the works that I had wrought under the sun is grievous unto me for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Ye, I hate all my labor which I have taken under the sun because I should leave it unto men that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool, yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored and where I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Well, the scripture is pretty self-explanatory. King Solomon was vexed because all of the works he had done, he was afraid somebody else would take all that knowledge and wisdom and use it for an evil purpose. Well, unfortunately, somebody did. They took all of what King Solomon had did and turned it into this elite society. The contrast between King David and King Solomon, King David asked to have a heart after Yahuwah, and Yahuwah's heart is his living word, so really he was asking to have a heart like Yah Yahushua, like his living word. King Solomon asked to have wisdom and knowledge in order to run the kingdom. Well, he didn't get blessed with the same thing that King David did. He got blessed with everything that came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the Bible codes is not from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's actually from the tree of life. His word is a living word and his living word gives and brings life as opposed to Kabbalah which comes from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is very different from the Bible code. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1, I said in my heart, Go to now, I will approve thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, man, and of mirth, what doth he? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainted my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold of folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heavens all the day of their life. I made me great works, I build me houses, I plant me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and planted trees. In them all of the kind of fruits made me pools of water, to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maids, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. 
I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men, musical instruments and all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem, also my wisdom remained with me. Even though he was sinning to no end, his wisdom stayed with him. If this wisdom was really coming from the Holy Spirit, he keeps saying, vexation of spirit. What is the vexation of spirit? That's the vexing the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit. What he was doing was grieving the Holy Spirit, but yet all this wisdom stayed with him. It's because his wisdom wasn't coming from the Holy Spirit. It was all head knowledge. It was all wisdom of the world. Kabbalah, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's why the wisdom stayed with him, even though he was sinning like no tomorrow. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Yahuwah, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a with very great train, with camels, with bare spices, with very much gold and precious stones, and when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Remember the name Sheba, and remember gold and precious stones, and all that was in her heart. By today's standards, ladies and gentlemen, who's Sheba? In this table you have in the ephod. Well, the ephod of Israel has 12 stones in it. But the thing is, is King Solomon already had an ephod with 12 stones in it. So what was he doing with these precious stones? Oh, maybe perhaps he made another ephod with only nine stones in it. That would be pretty much the same kind of ephod that Satan is wearing. And look, the workmanship of it was tabarets and pipes that were on the missing third row. So he had nine ephod stones and musical instruments in the third row. And it just so happened that King Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 8 that he had men singers and women singers and he had peculiar treasures of kings. I hope you're sitting down because here comes the shocker. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men and the living will lay to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter for the sadness of the countenance of the heart is better. The heart of the wise is the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of fools. This is also vanity. Verse 5, it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And encoded along here, you have in between where it's song of the fools, you have from the gatekeepers. Oh, and by the way, the word fools also means Orion, as in Amos 5, 8. Seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion and turn the shadow of death into morning and make the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the faces of the earth. That's right. The word fools is also the word for Orion, Orion's plural. So what were they doing in this verse? The gatekeepers were singing to Orion, the stars, Orion, like in the constellation out there in the bottomless pit. Now, why would they go and do something like that? Ecclesiastes 2.8, I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of sons of men, musical instruments and that of all sorts. So they were singing to the stars of Orion. Now, why would they go and do something like that? Maybe for the same reason that they first invented them in Genesis 4, 21, and his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all such as the handle of the harp and the organ. And you have to wonder who visited him. They had every intentions of worshiping and singing to the stars of Orion. Daniel 11:22 and with the arms of a flood shall they be overthrown from before him and shall be broken ye also the prince of the covenant 
and what's encoded along that line will floor you. Stones of, from the engraving, or from the portal, you have Og, the Prince of the Covenant, and CERN right across. CERN, ladies and gentlemen. In Isaiah chapter 27, verse 20, 21, 22, uh, 21. In Isaiah chapter 27, verse 22, the merchants of Sheba and Ramah, they were the thy merchants. They occupied in thy fairs with chiefs of all spices, with all precious stones and gold. These were being sold on a massive scale in the Middle East back in Isaiah's time, ladies and gentlemen. So what King Solomon had done had spread to the other nations. They were doing it too. In verse 21, you have lambs and rams right up here. Lambs, rams, and my own name is crossing this, Chris, Ray. Uh, but then here you have goats. And it's interesting, you have the word Sheba sitting right underneath goats. And this is uh, one way it spells quake and the other way it, say, it says gate. And then again down here, uh, all precious stones and gold is right here. You have as code. Then down here you have again, Ray, that also means C-U, C-U Sheba. And then over here it has CERN. Here's the Kabbalah supposed of tree of life. But once you start counting up the precious stones, which equals nine, plus one more, which isn't a precious stone, it's gold, it's a precious metal, you see 10 there. You take that same 10 and you compare it to what Lucifer has on his ephod in Ezekiel 28, 13, you're going to find out that there's nine precious stones plus one stone is a precious metal making 10. So what's on this Kabbalah tree of life is not really a true representation of life because this Satan is the prince of deception and all he wants to do is kill, maim, and destroy, specifically the nation of Israel. So when the scripture says, they profess me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, this is why. They're into mysticism. They're into this wickedness. They, because this for them is replacing the Holy Spirit and his word. You know, Google has been telling us who they work for this whole time. All you had to do was just look real, real hard. Yeah, that's right. All you down at YouTube and Google, your paycheck is coming from the devil himself. You know, the Arch of Palmyra, the, the gates of Baal on the sides. Look at the, what's on the sides. A tree with eight branches and one top equals nine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what was in the Garden of Eden, the Asher tree. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You have nine plus one is ten. Well, you know nine of these are depicting precious stones and the other was depicting a precious metal. Here's the other component that you need in order to complete the process. You need a lot of children's sacrifice. A lot of children, innocent children, have to be burnt to death in a horrible and sadistic and heinous and satanic way. Lots. We're talking millions like it was back in Moab. This is how they charge this thing. Isaiah 16, 14. But now know Yahuwah has spoken saying within three years as the year of a hireling and the glory of Moab shall be contempt with all the great multitude and the remnant shall be very small and feeble. When the Roman Empire finally collapsed, what was Caesar doing? What was Caligula doing? He was raping and murdering little boys in public in front of thousands of people. This is going to become a publicly acceptable act, just like it was back then, thousands of years ago. It was publicly acceptable to go murder your child for prosperity. Perfectly acceptable. From the time the seven years of affliction starts to within three years, oh, that would be about... 2.8 years or say 1,040 days. 
when Wormwood comes and the two witnesses come, when you finally realize that they're murdering children to open up a Stargate to bring in the enemy, kind of gives a new meaning to the word pizza gate. So the real pizza gate is actually the glory of Moab and what they were already doing thousands of years ago. That's the real pizza gate. And they're doing this to open up Stargates, use the ephod, and have their... Ah! Ah! So back to the Nazi thing. If uh, they were able to see the year 5776 in the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 12, I'm wondering if they also read Ecclesiastes uh, and seen this, what King Solomon was doing. And then, you know, look in these other places where I showed you and see that there are stargates. And it just so happens that the Nazis were playing around with stargates. So now, what do you think is going to happen when the enemy straps on the ephod and then stands on the Temple Mount in Daniel 9.27? Come on, guys. I know you can articulate the answer to this. I know you're really smart. You can do it. So what do you think they're going to be doing at CERN? I know you can articulate this. Come on. You're smart enough to figure this out. And with Sheba as well. How about walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire? The ephod stones. The gate stones. Ecclesiastes 2.13 Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness the wise man's eyes are in his head but the fool walketh in darkness and i myself perceive also that one event happeneth to them all then i said in my heart as it happened to the fool so it happened even to me and why was i then more wise then i said in my heart that this is also vanity for there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is the days to come, shall all be forgotten. Uh, how dieth the wise man as the fool? The word Urim and Thummim, the word Ur Urim, inside the word itself, uh, this is the root word for light, and it's plural. However, if you take out the word lights, you would have hey, yo, closed ma'am, that would be the word C, and the same for Thummim. If you took the uh, Tav and the and the Mem out, you would have the C. So what's happening here is this is describing the fallen angels, the light that's in the abyss, the C, and this here is talking about the end. Uh, flawless, he came to end or to be spent. So you have... These two words are surrounded by the sea. And this here is also the root word for the abyss. So you have the lights in the sea and the abyss, which is being represented on the, the Urim and the Thummim, which is on the breastplate of judgment, which is a part of the ephod. Oh, and don't forget at the beginning in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, when Yahuwah approached Cain, he told him that sin was lying at his portal. His engraving, not the door, the portal, to the portal, to the engraving. So you have to wonder what was Cain doing back then, even in the beginning of chapter 4. So this is what King Solomon was saying, that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything under the sun has already been done. And this is nothing new at all under the sun. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Our Heavenly Father's will over all this information. I love you. Thank you very much for watching. Blessings to you all. And until we meet again.